One of my favorite science fiction movies, it's actually my top 20 all time, Dark City, 1998, director Alex Proyas, an Australian. Will you like this movie? What makes this movie great? Let me try to answer those questions for you, coming up next. Fair warning, this video will have spoilers in it. I have to spoil the movie. And in fact, the first viewing of this movie, the, the movie takes you along for a ride. You don't know what's happening and it reveals stuff along the way. So if you like noir, William Hurt as a noir detective, Jennifer Connelly as a female heroine, and sort of a noir, a 1990s noirish thing, watch this movie and you'll be maybe pleasantly surprised, maybe not. You are confused, aren't you? Frightened. That's all right. I can help you. Who is this? I am a doctor. No, you must listen to me. You have lost your memory. There was an experiment. Something went wrong. Your memory was erased. Do you understand me? No, I don't understand. What the hell is going on here? With that spoiler warning, we can proceed. You know, this movie comes out a year before The Matrix. It's in an era of paranoid, conspiracy, science fiction oriented stuff. Something like t the TV show The X-File. Yet, this movie has a great retro futuristic feel. It comes out of Fritz Lang's Metropolis. It hybridizes 19. 40s 50s noir with that and i just love this movie's look overall this look tone feel aesthetic and i like this sort of conspiracy paranoia storyline in which an unwilling or unknowing hero a wronged man a hitchcockian wronged man as it were wakes up with amnesia he doesn't know who he is or what's going on but he's accused of being a serial killer and he's followed by police and this weirdo group of bald-headed a white albino looking guy is called the strangers so the spoiler as it turns out the strangers are actually aliens and all oh, this is a big spoiler everybody's on a giant spaceship being manipulated all oh, they're human beings in a spaceship city one of the weirdest spaceships maybe the greatest spaceships ever in movie history a giant city floating in space a 1940s noir city in which everyone's being experimented on there's a giant simulation going on in which everyone's memories are being warped changed distorted by a human mad scientist, Daniel Schreiber, played by Kiefer Sutherland, working alongside of these aliens called the Strangers, who are trying to find something about human beings, the so-called human soul, which they can't quite get at. And they look, while they look like people, they've actually taken on the bodies of human beings. It's very creepy to think about them as being sort of zombie-like aliens within a zombie-like body. And I think the movie's a wonderful hybrid of noir and science fiction, from Fritz Lang's Metropolis to like 1980s, 90s, movie stuff the movie Hellraiser comes up for me and then the acting in this movie there's all kinds of associations from the actors in this movie Richard O'Brien who is from the famously from the Rocky Horror Picture Show Bruce Spence from the Mad Max movies Mad Max 2 and 3 Ian Richardson from Terry Gilliam stuff Brazil in particular if you take that whole box of movies plus William Hurt, plus Jennifer Connelly, Rufus Sewell even, you get a mix of movies that is delightful as a moviegoer. So you can watch this movie, to me, without knowing anything about movie history, and it's fun, but the more you know about movie history, sort of the better this movie gets, in my opinion. One thing that helps sort of prove that is Roger Ebert, the great Chicago Sun-Times critic who did only a few or a handful of commentaries for DVDs and Blu-rays. He could have done 50, 100, or a million of those. He did it for Casablanca, Citizen Kane, the Ozu movie Floating Weeds, his own screenplay Beneath the Valley of Dolls, and then Crumb, the documentary, and this movie. So how does this movie combine with Casablanca and Citizen Kane? In Roger Ebert's mind, this was a fantastic movie worthy of a heap of praise. We're thinking about this movie in its era and time place. The Matrix, for example, comes out later, and it's about a hero, a protagonist who doesn't know he's in a simulation, a reality set up for him, and he wants to know the truth about the real reality in the famous red pill, blue pill scene. Well, that comes out a year after this movie in which this hero the Rufus Sewell character John Murdoch doesn't know who he is wants to find out the truth about reality wants to find Shell Beach no one seems to know where it is and then he starts to come against these strangers and ends up battling with them not unlike what happens later on in the Matrix where it's the human subject as it were who's facing the simulation trying to know reality versus the manipulators of the reality the strangers in the case of this movie thematically i love thinking about the themes of this movie now everybody in this movie every human being has absolutely no past no history nor will they recover it presumably by the end of this movie it's orwellian through and through 1984 like in which there is no past it's been completely erased 
and the main character is trying to recover the past. Little does he know he can't do it. It's a wonderful ending to this movie. It's one of my favorite endings ever, in which the entire movie is dark, 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 as the title says throughout. And then there's this light created by the sort of Nietzschean Ubermensch character who evolves over the course of this movie, John Murdoch. He's able to do what the aliens, the strangers do themselves, which is tune or change the city. He becomes the master of the simulation, as it were. He makes it his own and he reforms the world. He doesn't revolutionize it, but he creates the sun, he creates the beach. And it's a very warm, light feeling at the end of this movie for me, a moment of triumph in which the character gains some agency. But nevertheless, when he's asked his name at the end of the, his movie, he owns the name that the strangers given to him, his identity that's not his, but he takes on the name of John Murdoch for himself. I'm Anna, by the way. What's your name? John. John Murdoch. This movie is at once like the triumph of the human soul over the alien self, but also then it's reformational in that you take what's from the past and you change it to make it your own and make it a, well, the world literally a better place. That That's literalized in this movie, the cliche of making the world a better place by John Murdoch. Director Alex Proyas actually has a director's cut of this, which I recommend watching because it takes out a terrible voiceover narrator at the beginning, which spoils everything. And it's gonna add about three minutes to the movie of relevant context, better shot, better pacing overall. So check out the director's cut instead of the sort of not as great theatrical release. Now, director Proyas chooses all kinds of fast cutting in this. To my memory, I could be wrong, but this movie used to have, it may still have the record for shortest shot length in a movie. It's something like 1.8 or two, two seconds per shot in this movie. It's very fast paced. And all the fragmentation, all the shot making and the fragmentation of it does make sense to because the main character is trying to literally piece together his past what is this place he's in and he can't put the pieces together very well if at all and all of these movies literally broken up into fragments that you yourself have to piece together to get the whole picture as far as the fritz long stuff goes you know there's a upper world and a lower world the upper world this is a, a totally hg wells move it's sort of a blissful existence now it's not literally blissful but the people are ignorant they don't know what's going on but below them is the truthful world that runs the show or runs literally the machines that create and craft the world which the strangers have control of. That comes out of, for example, the time machine from H.G. Wells, and then it's in Metropolis as well. One of my ideas about this movie is it's set us up for the simulation theory of reality, which a lot of major scientists, major thinkers have bought into. They believe all of human reality, all of the universe is a simulation created by simulators and who knows what's beyond our own simulation. But they literally believe this and think it's probabilistically true. But we have been set up for 30 plus years for that where you have these movies like Dark City, The Matrix, X-Files to some extent, and a bunch of others like this where there's simulators that are creating a reality and the humans have to learn that they're in a simulation. World on a Wire going back to the 1970s with Rainier Werner Fassbender. These movies showcase, you know, both a, a philosophical stance about the system of the world itself and whatever political system, whatever social, economic, or political system you're in being manipulated by these grand elite manipulators who aren't human after all, as, as the case of this movie is or even reality itself and that makes probably this this movie and the matrix for sure go all the way back to plato in which all these characters are literally in the dark they have no knowledge they're completely ignorant and they need to be educated and learn the truth in order to enlighten their world and have the sun come out at the end it's very plato's cave allegory like this movie if you want to look at it that way regarding the casting i find this movie does something i absolutely love William Hurt was born to play a noir detective, and here we get him as such. Jennifer Connelly was born to play a female heroine or female lead in a noir. Here we get that in an era and time when there weren't very many noirs. Rufus Sewell is an interesting choice as the lead, an unknown actor at the time, still not a, not a you know lead actor very often, but I think he's great here, Shakespearean trained actor, who thematically is ideal for this role of a guy who doesn't know where he is or who he is. But of course, the viewers don't know who he is if they are not familiar with uh, you know acting knowledge and Rufus Sewell. Like, who is that guy? This is a bold choice in the 
part of Proyas and even the movie studio. This movie did very poorly when it came out, but yet it's still alive and well. And I think part of that's Rufus Sewell's performance uh, of a guy striving to know, but being bewildered and being chased and terrified. He's an ideal Hitchcockian wrong man. He would have been great in a Hitchcock movie back in the 50s or 60s. All in all, I think this is a unique science fiction movie that blends a whole lot of movie stuff from the past, and it comes out before The Matrix and sets up a number of things later on. I think 25 years out, as of the making of this video, this movie is still fresh to me. It watches very well on a big screen, and I highly recommend it if you like science fiction, B-movie science fiction stuff, if you like Metropolis and Noir. All that stuff will make this movie a delight, at least a fun romp. What do you think of Dark City? Let us know in the comments, and please subscribe to this channel for more great content. Thank you. Have a great day.